feel the power. Welcome to Righteous Invasion of Truth with Dr. Abel Damina. We're going to come with power today. The word will come with power because where the word of a king is, there is power. But do me a favor. Invite friends, loved ones, and family members to hook up to this page as we, you know, bring the word of his grace, as we lighten the dark corners or places of the earth. Fasten your seatbelts right now today. Let me take you into the word of his grace that will build you up and give you your inheritance among the sanctified. Happy viewing. 100% answer prayers guaranteed. James 1, 5 to 7. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it unto to all men liberally and upbraid it not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, not in wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. And for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. So if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of the giving God. We examine the giving God, the all giving God. When you see adjectives in the scriptures, it's very important you take note of those adjectives. Because an adjective is a word that describes a noun. So when you see the scripture says, God is the all giving God. The author of the book wants you to see the noun through the eye of the adjective. He wants you to see God through the eye of the giving God. That's why he uses the adjective to qualify the noun. He says, let him that lack wisdom ask of the giving God. Not God, the giving. So we, we see God through the eye of the adjective, the giving God. He is the giving God. That is his character. That is his person. That is his nature to give. Let him ask the giving God. That given unto all men liberally. The word liberally means generously. He is a generous giver. When you meet a generous giver, he gives even when you don't ask. Because that's his nature. And not just that he's a generous giver. He gives it without finding faults. He gives liberally and he does not upbraid. Upbraid it not. He does not find fault. God will not ask you, did you pray for one hour? God will not ask you, do you have faith? He gives without finding fault. He gives liberally. He gives generously and he gives without finding fault. Let him ask the giving God. And he doesn't give to Christians. He gives to all men. See his liberality. He gives to all men. Not just Christians. He gives to all men. Christian, non-Christian. He gives to everybody. That's his nature. And he does not find fault. You need to know that. You know I love brother James because nobody in the New Testament described God to us with such clarity like James. He gives without finding fault. Amen. So we began to deal with the subject of prayer and we've been here for quite a while. Now he's talking about the giving God from verse 5. Then he comes to verse 17 to tell us how God gives. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. And cometh down from the Father of light with whom is no variableness, not a shadow of turning. The all-giving God gives to all men. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask the giving God who gives two times giving God who gives liberally generously every good gift comes from God and upbraided not it shall be given everything is give 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 there is no place in that description of God that says it shall be denied or held back it's all give 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 fault no fault it shall be given he gives liberally to all men. Hallelujah. 
he gives generously the giving God and he says he shall be given him the word gift is the word dores in the Greek and the word dores means the intention behind the giving that is the intention behind God giving is good every good and perfect gift so the giving God when he gives the rest the intention behind his giving is good and perfect so his giving comes with a quality of his character when he gives his giving carries with it the quality of his character he does not give independent of himself when he gives a quality of his character which is good and perfect characterizes the giving am i teaching here yeah he gives with the quality of his character and what is the quality of his character good and perfect every good and perfect gift comes from above from the father of lights with whom there is no variableness he doesn't vary today he says pastor praise i like you take a jaguar uh, uh, reverend tony i don't like you manage a volkswagen there is no varying he everywhere he gives it carries the quality of good and perfect he is generous to all good bad ugly wicked bad satanic holigolistic the same god is rich to all there is no difference no shadow of turning oh he gives liberally he does not upbraid he doesn't look for fault he doesn't ask you how many steps have you kept there are 25 steps to answer prayer have you kept up to 20 he doesn't find fault keep step no keep step doesn't change anything he, it is his nature to give so he gives whether you keep step or you don't keep step the all giving god and his gift comes with the quality of his nature no shadow of turning no variation no variableness thank you lord no variableness perfect teleon teleon that's a greek word for perfect it means complete every good and complete perfect teleon so what james is saying in in essence is that when you pray god's response to your prayer is his character every time you pray god's response to your prayer is his character what is his character good and perfect that's his nature god cannot say that your prayer is bad so even though i am not a bad god but because you pray bad prayer take bad answer uh -uh. his answer is not independent of him his answer is his character and his character is good and perfect if you're hearing me say powerful amen, amen. let your amen be taller than your neighbor amen. hold your neighbor's leg hold your neighbor's leg i know why i'm talking hold your neighbor's leg very tight tell him god's gift comes with his character good and perfect his gift is good and perfect now there are four different things that describes the gift of god and i'll talk about that very shortly he is liberal he is not stingy a liberal person will give you what you're asking and add more is that true yeah he will add more so therefore we have said prayer begins from the heart and it finds expression through the mouth it begins from the heart and finds expression through the mouth 
So Jesus said, when you pray, do not pray like the Pharisees who think that they shall be heard by their much speaking. He says, you know, you should not have vain reputation in your prayer. And we said vain reputation is talking and talking without specifically saying anything. And Jesus, describing the quality of this giving God, he said, you will not ask him for his stone and he gives you bread. You will not ask him for fish and he gives you a serpent. Why? Because when he gives to you, his giving comes with his character, which is good and perfect. So that is why when he says, but let him ask in faith, the asking in faith is not for God. The asking in faith is for me because that faith is my capacity to receive that good and perfect that comes from the all-giving God. I don't need the faith for God because God gave before I ask. But the faith is needed for me to receive what the giving God has given. So the faith is not for God. The faith is my capacity to receive what God gave. I'm teaching good. Let him ask in faith. Not in wavering, for he that wavers is like the wave of the sea. Can we read together like a mass choir church? One to go. But let him ask in faith, not in wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Verse 7. For let not that man think that God shall give him anything. Eh? let not that man think that god shall give him anything is that what he says what did he say let not that man think so the faith is my capacity to receive what the all giving god has given so if i don't receive it's not his fault it's my failure to receive what he the all giving god has given so there's nothing like unanswered prayer there's nothing like unanswered prayer because your father knows that you have need of these things before you ask him and he is the giving god seller let not that man think that he shall receive let him not think he shall receive anything from the lord why won't he receive because it's left to him to receive or to reject but as far as the giving god is concerned the giving god has given and what he has given is good and perfect i did this illustration didn't i the other day did i pastor praise receive now whether pastor praise receives it or not is it now my fault whose fault it will be pastor praise's fault receive he takes it for him to receive this he needs faith he needs faith in me to receive when i said receive if he doesn't have faith in me and i say receive he will stretch his hand because he doesn't know what i'm dropping so the faith is in knowing that god is all giving he's libra and he operates not that knowledge stretches my hand to receive i'm teaching here yeah the faith is me knowing that god is the all giving and knowing that i cannot ask him for fish and he gives me a snake and i cannot ask him for bread and he gives me a stone that knowledge is called faith touch your neighbor say are you understanding look at your neighbor's eye touch him say are you understanding i want you to talk to somebody don't look at me touch your neighbor say are you understanding the faith is not for god the faith is my capacity to receive oh, yeah. 
Somebody say, I lambano. Don't be looking, just be answering. Say, I lambano. Say it again. Say it very loud. If you know what you are saying, you won't do I lambano. You will say it with aggression. Say, I lambano. You know what you just said? I receive. The word lambano is the Greek word for receive. I lambano. I receive. Lambano. I receive. I lambano. I receive. So the failure is not God's. The failure is man's. And what brings a failure is lack of adequate knowledge on the character of God. What is the character of God? All giving. What is another character? Liberal. What is another character? No fault finding. That knowledge emboldens me to receive. When you know that God is the all-giving God, you know that God is liberal, you know that God does not find fault, you come joyfully knowing that you cannot go empty. So you receive, I labano. Why don't people receive? Because they don't know the character of God. <sighs> Number two, you have been taught over the years that there are times God doesn't answer which is a misrepresentation you have been taught over the years that you must you must have a particular attitude before God will answer you which is also a wrong teaching so your mind has been messed up and I'm fixing the mess I lambando I lambano. Eh, I receive. That knowledge is faith. That knowledge. Hey, something is catching me in this building. Hey. Oh God, do get boje kele ne moha. Bronda goga kokolo nomo zebrando kele boda kadange kele moha. Ongoro toseke ya. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Ege. <laughs> Jagoda Colono. Angra Laka. Coco Sokele de Baho. Ele Boja Kananko Coroto Sokele de Baha. <laughs> Ele Boja Galana. <laughs> Kronda Gaso Kele de Bohoska. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. In the New Testament, you will never find anywhere the believer is prayed for. To have faith. You will never find one. Never. Where a believer is prayed for to have faith. He asked them to have faith in God in the gospels but not in the epistles. From Acts to Revelation, there is nowhere the believer is asked to have faith. But there is everywhere the believer is asked to pray for revelation, for knowledge. Because that knowledge is what triggers the faith of, of a carbota, the faith of the Son of God that is inside the believer. You don't need more faith. All the faith you need is inside you. Jesus, the author and the finisher of faith. And where is he? In you. All the faith is in you. So if somebody said the reason why your life is like this because you don't have faith, tell him, shut up, you don't know anything, get out. It's not a faith matter. It's the fact that I do not have the knowledge of the character of this God I'm dealing with. Because if I have the knowledge of his character, I will have the confidence to take what he has given me. See, I hear you. Somebody come and say, I'll buy you a car. Ask him, which one did you bring? Then you saw him trekking and he will buy you a car. Look for pure water, give him to drink so he can cool down. Because his head is hot. That's why he's talking like that. The person that will buy you a car, you must confirm his character. Eh? You will check the one you drive now. And see whether he even has one he's driving. 
So when God say, I will bless you beyond all nations. Check his character. <laughs> and then in his character, you hear him say, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. When you see the character and he said, I will bless you. Yes, Lord, I receive. I am. I am bad. <laughs> because the person talking has the capacity, the capability, the wherewithal to make it happen 30 times over in less than one year. Egeboshaka, receive now. Ay, 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 ay. That is where most people have problem. And that's why James said, but let him ask in faith. Nothing wavering. He shouldn't be in doubt of God. He shouldn't waver. Because if you are not sure of the character of this God, you will not receive anything. Because how can you receive from somebody you don't believe in? So the faith is not for God. The faith is my capacity to receive. Say I hear you. Yeah, that's my capacity to receive. If you that are evil give good gifts to your children, how much more? Your child will not ask you for bread and you give him a stone. He will ask you for fish and you give him a snake. If you that are evil, it's a contrast. How much more your father, which is in heaven, he will give the Holy Spirit to those that ask him. Because the, the container and carrier of all the blessings of this life is the Holy Ghost. So when they give you the Holy Ghost, they have given you the master key to all of the treasures of life. That's why the moment you receive the Holy Ghost, you have come into the gateway to unlimited blessings. That's the gateway to all of God's resources. He's the down payment. He's the seal of redemption. Hey! He's the keeper of the church. Hey, he's the revelator. He's the intercessor. He's the teacher. And he's the one that will open you up to the treasures of God. He's the one that will counsel you and show you the deep things of God. And he will show you things to come. He's the one that will carry Jesus and show you. Holy Ghost. And he's inside you right now. Can you confirm he's inside you? Mengo Shakota. To confirm it's inside you is not yes. To confirm it's inside you is boloto boloto yakano koloda. It's called the spirit of adoption. God has set forth the spirit of his son into our hearts. Whereby we cry Abba Father. And the spirit of his son gives us the ability to speak. Agabo Shaka to speak Agabo Shaka with the language that carnal men cannot understand. For he that speaketh in tongues speaketh not unto men but unto God. And how be it in the spirit? Agabo Shaka, he is speaking what? Mysteries. He is speaking answers. Speaking in tongues is not a luxury, it's a necessity for believers. It's not a luxury. It's a necessity. Because that's the only way you can speak to God uninterruptedly. I thank God that I speak in tongues more than ye all. That is why I have more revelation than ye all. Paul was speaking. Paul spoke in tongues everywhere. In the bathroom as he's showering. Gaining access into the deep things of God. To live the higher life on planet earth. Some of you are economical with your tongues. And some of you are embarrassed to speak in tongues. But I am not ashamed of the gospel. Touch your neighbor say I talk in tongues. I talk in tongues. And if you don't like tongues look for another seat. Gigemo go go go. Oh, I feel something. Can you feel the fountain? There's electricity in this house. Gabayo da gabashoka gaga. Hey, 
Rekato ko shekele me mo sota la na mahaha. Ele bo shekere de ge bo sota la na bo rakote kele mo. Hey, haha. Agala bo rakote kele mo. When you start praying in the spirit, you get captured in glory. Gabosha kama gaga, ele bosha karata kama sote lele bo, ele bosha gala boroko teke le bota kaga gaga karata kaga. Ah, shoko bo 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 boroke, mamra ya la koroto ke ba, ereta gaba ba 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 ba. When you pray in tongues, when you pray in tongues, when you pray in tongues, you unleash the river. And as the river begins to flow, it enters every part of your body. Where there is sickness, healing takes place. Where there is lack, healing. Anywhere the river enters, whatever dies comes alive. But the way the river will flow is when you speak out. Ah! Sit down, listen. I feel this thing. <laughs> Joel chapter 2, start from 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour my spirit upon all what? Did he say I will pour down? Check. What did he say? Eh? Is there a difference between pour down and pour out? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Acts 2 17. And it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour down. Wow. Eh? I will pour down wow. out my spirit upon what? Oh. Upon what? Oh. Upon what? Oh. Upon what? Oh. John 7 38. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his. I will pour out. The Holy Ghost is not poured down, it's poured out. Pour out not down that means it's in a container and when you tumble the container it pours out that container is called your belly the holy ghost is not coming from heaven the holy ghost is inside you so what do you do you pour him out. How do you pour out? When you start Gogoroto Kemagaga, what is coming out of you is the river of the spirit. And what will it do? It will enter flesh. And what will happen to flesh? Healing. Restoration. If the spirit of him that raised Christ from the dead dwelleth in your mortal body, what shall he do? If somebody look at him, tell him, please, I'm not talking to you, I'm helping myself. Tell him, please, I know you don't need help, but I need some help now. Corononga. What are you doing when you pray in the spirit? You are pulling out help to help in time of need that's not my teaching for today that's a side dish let's get into the emphasis there are different kinds of prayers therefore so take note number one there is prayer for things there is prayer for people there is prayer for circumstances and there is prayer for you and the principle of all these four different kinds of prayer they are different the way you pray for things is not the way you pray for people the way you pray for people is not the way you pray again for circumstances and the way you pray for circumstances is not the way you pray for yourself and you must understand the rules that govern these different prayers otherwise you will not have your prayers registered praying with all 
Ephesians 6 18 praying always with all prayer the Greek actually says with all manner of prayer just like you have sports but in the field of sports there are different sports okay the way you play volleyball is not the way you play table tennis table tennis and volleyball are sports but they are different sports governed by different rules you don't use the rules of football to play table tennis so same thing with prayer prayer is the name of the field but in the field of prayer there are different prayers governed by different rules so you need to know which prayer is which and what rules govern that prayer then that way when you pray you pray with epignosis you pray with accurate precise definite knowledge you are not doing trial and error you are precise you are definite it's called revealed knowledge epignosis because the new testament is a testament of epignosis yes, we're a testament of exact knowledge yes, not trial and error that's why teaching is paramount in the ministry of the new testament right. we're not playing trial and error in the new testament so there's prayer for things prayer for for people prayer for circumstances and prayer for for you all prayer all request there are things you cannot demand in the name of jesus there are things that the authority of that name does not cover and you need to know what are those things so that you won't be praying a prayer that exposes your illiteracy to your enemy making your enemy pity you for being an illiterate and taking advantage of you the more the name of jesus there are things it does not cover are you here uh -huh. listen carefully so what are those things things that you cannot demand in the name of jesus what are those things any prayer that is not in love the name of jesus will not walk in it any prayer that is not in love the name of jesus cannot work in that prayer the name of jesus won't work outside of love because outside of love is hate the name doesn't work in hatred because the name of jesus cannot betray the nature of god and the nature of god is love so the name of jesus cannot contradict god's nature rather the name of jesus backs confirms validates the nature of god and god is love so any prayer that is not within the parameters of love the name of jesus is impotent in that prayer if you like call the name like fire it will not work So prayers must be therefore within the parameters of love if the name will work in that prayer. If you are hearing me say I hear you. Okay Matthew 5 44. But I say unto you this is Jesus teaching before he said but I say. Let's see what he said because but I say is in response to something that was said before but I say. So what was said before but I say. You have heard that it had been said thou shall love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy that's what you heard but I the message I the message because Moses okay hold it pause go back to Luke 24 25 then said he unto them O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken next verse ought not christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory and beginning at moses this moses that said love those who love you hate your enemies 
beginning at this same Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. What Moses was trying to do was to reveal Jesus to us. But in revealing Jesus, he didn't know Jesus. So he revealed Jesus plus his impression. But when Jesus, the one they were revealing came, he had to put the records right. He said, they said this, but I say I'm correcting the record because they are not me. I am me and I have the audacity to correct the impressions about myself. I feel like I'm talking to somebody here. But I say unto you, love your eh? Love who? Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for them which despitefully use you. And persecute you even those that persecute you pray a blessing on them don't pray for them to die pray a blessing on them why next verse that you may be the children of your father which is where in heaven for he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good and send it rain on the just and on the unjust be like your father they cause you bless them you know why because their cause cannot affect you the gods are dead bless them they speak evil of you speak well of them that you may be like your father teaching good the church of today don't like this kind of message they like acidic prayer they are be roasted be roasted like bonga fish inside oven that is coming out of anger it's coming out of bitterness it's coming out of strife flesh. it's flesh that's why you like that kind of prayer because the church is full of flesh and the flesh there is because of the kind of teaching coming from the pulpit is doctrine so a prayer that is not in love will not get the answer to cause someone is not love causing someone is hate and christians are full of coarse words even satan is afraid of some christians because their mouth is venom you just come close you come all their body is tensed up with bitterness so everybody has given them space look at the son of your father his name was steven they carry stone boom 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 they are stoning steven to death that's when vengeance prayer should have come out brother Stephen a man full of faith and the Holy Ghost sire Stephen Stephen looked at them and said I see the heavens opened I see Jesus standing at the right hand of the father oh the glory is everywhere father <laughs> forgive them they do not know what they are doing hey that's the son of his father some of you will have said oh be blind be blind let your legs disappear let your buttocks become legs be blind Stephen said forgive them they don't know what they are doing and Stephen still had the chance to leave but he decided to go he said father into your hands I I Stephen I commit my spirit and he Stephen gave up the ghost they didn't collect it that means Stephen will have decided not to die and nobody will kill him but when he agreed to go because when you see the glory of heaven you won't want to stay here again what of Paul after they stoned Paul stone him stone him stone him he collapsed they heaped stone on top of him he fainted they concluded he has died because every movement stopped they left and went away stupid man we are finished with this troublemaker let's have peace in the society nonsense as they left paul recovered pushed all the stones stood up 
I said, I have a preaching engagement. <laughs> I have not finished. <laughs> the next morning, they saw him inside the synagogue teaching. And they said, this man, we don't know what to do with him. That is what we're talking about. You have authority over this planet. One day Paul said, I don't even know whether to go or to stay. I'm in a straight between two. Should I go or should I stay? If I go, I will be with Christ. If I stay, I will comfort you. Death, wait first. Let me think. Ah, uh, get away. I'm not ready now. I'm going to stay some more and strengthen the brethren. And then one day Paul said, I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. I have finished my course. Henceforth is laid for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord shall give to me and not to me alone, but unto all those that love is appearing i am now ready to be offered up when he said that he gave them license to finish him they took him and and beheaded him and crucified him upside down and he didn't go before time he went when he decided to go the reason why some of you pray those stupid prayers because you're afraid in the kingdom you don't defend yourself in the kingdom, he's your defense. I'm teaching here. Touch your neighbor, say, I love you, I love you. You have no choice. You have no choice. I'm teaching here. So the name of Jesus will not work in a prayer of hate. It won't work. Call it till you tire. It will not work. Because it does not have jurisdiction within the parameters of hatred. The name of Jesus has jurisdiction in the love of God. Chapter 9 verse 53. And they did not receive him because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. And when his disciples James and John saw this, they said, Lord, will thou that we command fire? Fireful Christians. Will thou that we command fire? Shout fire! You don't want to shout again? Will thou that we command fire? to come down from heaven and consume them wipe them away like elijah jesus look you and elijah you are bigger than elijah if your genome could not take it you can't take it how can they block you ah! do they know who you are they are trying to find his ego jesus let's just command fire that means they had the capacity to command that fire they had it if they didn't have it jesus will not answer them jesus knows if he leaves these people they will do it so what happened? Look at the next verse. But he turned and rebuked them and said, You know not what manner of spirit you are. He said, Stop that nonsense. You don't know the spirit inside you. You know what Jesus was saying? That Elijah did it doesn't mean I was the one that answered it. That's what Jesus is saying. You know not what manner. So that means there was a manner of spirit that answers those prayers. It's not the spirit of God. Next verse. For the son of man is not come to destroy men's lives but to save them and they went to another village. Instead of sitting there and praying for your boss to die, resign and look for another job. It's simple. Leave the man alone. They went to another village. I'm here to give life. That means the name of Jesus does not have jurisdiction in, the, in any prayer that is outside the love of God. Yeah, somebody say, if you try me now, I will make it myself and pray. You are an occultist. See, I will naked myself and pray. If you try me, I will write your name. I will put inside bottle. I will shake the bottle and cock the bottle and cock it. By the time I do midnight prayer, seven days with that bottle like this, I will smash it. You cannot be normal. It's witchcraft. That's a witchcraft operation. Jesus never prayed that kind of prayer. It's not in the Bible. This is what occultic people do. This is what they do in prayer house. You don't bring that to church. What is naked yourself? God doesn't look at your outward appearance. So what is your nakedness of? He only looks at your heart. Evil spirits will look at your body and help to carry out operation. But not God. Hey! Yes, you're not hearing me? Yes, if you're hearing, shout, I hear, I hear. Yes, 
Praise God. Gospel, eh? The name of Jesus will not work in an environment of hatred. No. You say we are here to save lives. We are not here to destroy lives. So no prayer in the name of Jesus destroys lives. Please listen. I am not saying you cannot destroy lives. But it will not be in the name of Jesus. Romans 12 14. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Did you see that? Bless and what? And curse not. Verse 19 to 21 of Romans 12. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Next verse. Therefore, if thy enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt keep coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. So we must always pray good things in the name of Jesus. If it's a prayer in the name of Jesus, it must come with good things because every good and perfect gift cometh from God and the name of Jesus validates God's character. You can't pray in the name of Jesus and curse somebody. You can't pray and destroy people in the name of Jesus. You cannot. Whoever you are, God is no respecter of persons. You cannot. Ephesians 4, 31 to 32. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be kind one to another tender hearted forgiving one another even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you all bitterness all anger all malice all wrath put it away be kind one to another tender hearted forgiving one another even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you I'm teaching here you can't kill people in the name of Jesus you can kill people but not in the name of Jesus no that pastor just said die the man die we need to investigate who answered his prayer yes he's a pastor yes he's a man of God yes we respect him but when it comes to doctrine we know who answered his prayer what are you talking about all scripture is given by inspiration and is profitable for doctrine hey, you can't confuse me ah! thank you lord if you're in the house shout i hear you if you're in the house shout i hear you Tender hearted. Turn to your neighbor say, I am tender hearted towards you. Say, I forgive you even before you commit the offense. James 3.10 Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. You can't be blessing people with your mouth and at the same time from the same mouth cursing is coming out. Uh-uh. No, no, you're either a cursor or a blesser. Ask your neighbor, which one are you? I'm a blesser. Be blessed. Yeah. I don't know anything else other than blessing. Because I'm like my father. He knows people will do you. That's why I say be tender hearted, forgiving. He knows. He knows people will do. That's why I say bless those that persecute you. He knows you'll be persecuted. Don't think he doesn't know. He's touched by the feeling of our infirmities. He knows. But he wants you to stay in a power zone where things will work. So he said forgive them. Let them go. What did I say? So the name of Jesus will not work in any prayer that is outside love. Ephesians 
chapter 4 verse 27 neither give place to the devil don't forget we said man has authority on earth to assist spiritual entities both god and satan need the assistance of man to operate on earth man has authority only man can give his authority either to god or to satan to operate on earth don't forget that god cannot operate here except a man gives him authority satan cannot operate here except a man gives him authority so both god and satan are looking for man to give them authority to operate here so he now says neither give place to the devil so when you say die what are you doing you are giving place to the devil to steal to kill and to destroy don't forget that don't forget that you are giving place to the devil when you cooperate with satan he will wreck havoc and destroy lives anytime you cooperate with satan when he said don't give place to the devil that means a believer can give satan access to humanity that's what he means so when you give satan cooperation he will wreck somebody's life let me tell you this when you give place to the devil you are going to allow demonic activity in your prayer life every time you give satan place you have invited demons to partner with you in your prayer life the moment you say die i curse you satan takes that authority since god will not use it somebody must use it satan will collect it and use it on the person by your consent i'm going to teach you some things i'm going to show you bible just follow me every time you say those words remember we exercise authority through words so when you say die you just license an evil spirit because your words will direct your authority your words will direct your authority so when you say die what you are saying is that my authority function in the area of killing and because god is not the killer then the killer will have to use your authority to fulfill the assignment you have uttered with your words i'm teaching i know some of you are struggling because all your life you have been killing everybody and today this preacher is just spoiling market for you so papa if people do us evil what should we do bless them bless them that you may be the children of your father hallelujah oh i said hallelujah james 3 14 but if you have bitter envying and strife in your heart glory not and lie not against the truth when you are praying for people to die as a result of bitterness in your heart don't say it is god lie not against the truth glory not don't be feeling good that you caused the person and he died glory not in it and don't lie that it is god that killed the person i love james clap for james <laughs> because you know james has clear many problems in his teaching he said glory not and lie not against the truth next verse this wisdom descended not from above but is earthly sensual and devilish hey, this wisdom oh. say now if i just if i just shake my head now with a bottle of oil your mother will run mad try me and see 
Zako Moshaka. Your mother is running mad. Regaga, regaga. As you are talking like that, evil spirits will come through your authority. Because as you are speaking, you are a licensing authority. And they will strike the woman. Then the Bible says, Glory not. Just know that this wisdom that you have used on that woman is devilish. You and Satan have become partners in crime. You have become an agency of diabolism. It's earthly and sensual. It's sensual. It looks sensible. But remember, anything that is sensual is devilish. It's not from God. Reverend Tony, you know, when Elisha said, if I be a man of God, let fire. If Jesus was there, he would have told him, stop that. Jesus would have told him, stop that. Shut up. Come sit down if you don't know what to do. Jesus would have rebuked Elijah. If he rebuked the disciples that wanted to copy Elijah, it means if he was there, he would have rebuked Elijah. That means it was not Jesus that answered Elijah's prayer. It was Satan. And here people say, Lord, send another Elijah here to pray your fire down. Send the fire Jesus. If Elijah come here, you will enter children's church. These are not the days of Elijah. These are the days of the manifestation of the sons of God. Where are the sons? Where are the sons? Somebody shout the spirit of adoption. Somebody shout the spirit of the love of God is in my heart. It's devilish. It's sensual. All those wicked books you bought, go and burn them this afternoon. Bring them out, drop them, pour fuel. I license you, burn it to ashes. Those books are demonic. Call it acidic prayers. 100 dangerous prayers. All those books are satanic. Let me tell you where they got those prayer points from. From native doctors. They copy them from native doctors. Then look for Old Testament scriptures and put you will see that all those prayers are from old testament because old testament was was a testament of assumption a testament of rumor they didn't know god so both the thing satan did and the thing god did they say it was god but in the new testament we have revelation we know god and we know satan and we can tell where what is coming from i'm teaching here touch your neighbor say epignosis exact knowledge devilish let me give you the greek words for this so you can get a clear picture of what he's saying there the word sensual is the word natural or unspiritual the greek word for it is suchikus s-u-c-h-i-k-o-s p-s-u-c-h-i-k-o-s suchikus in first corinthians 2 14 he calls it the natural man in first corinthians 15 44 he calls it the natural body in jude 19 he calls it sensual of the flesh so those kind of prayers are sensual they are unspiritual they are natural they are from the senses they are concocted by the wisdom of men they are calculations coming out of human imaginations they are built from human imagery inspired by demons they sound like proverbs from the village council some of those words that they use as prayer points if you examine the words very well you will know an illiterate coin them you won't see intelligence in some of those coinages because they are coming from senses they are not coming from the, the from god they are not from above wisdom of men that comes to naught you know as i'm talking right now pastor praise there are pastors who just by this teaching don't have a ministry they don't have any ministry because their ministry was this thing so now that we have removed it they have no ministry and i'm not joking i'm very serious some so-called pastors that's all they specialize in kill and die some say my name is pastor killer reverend so and so alias pastor killer he 
shoot and kill i don't miss target point and kill that's the name of the man of god so everywhere they see me they say pastor point and kill you say look be careful because once i do like this <laughs> i'm teaching yeah that your faith will not stand on the wisdom of men but in the power of god sensual senses that's why you somebody will give you prayer point like every unclean spirit that has brought a pipe and connected it to my spirit siphoning my blessings what are you waiting for how can evil spirit have access to your spirit i am dead my life is hid with christ if for evil spirit to find me he has to defeat holy ghost defeat jesus and overcome god to locate me hey, where i am they cannot come so no weapon formed against me shall prosper ayakotela lift your hands and shout born of god born of the world i overcome the world your problem is illiteracy it's not satan satan has accepted his defeat long ago and he has agreed that he's defeated he accepted it he agreed he is so why are you trying to overemphasize the obvious concentrate on the victory that is yours and celebrate what christ has done hallelujah he's risen from the dead he is lord every knee shall bow every tongue confess that jesus christ is lord to the glory of god the father Whoa! and he is lord he is lord he, is lord. he has risen from the dead he is lord every knee shall bow every tongue confess that jesus christ is lord oh he is lord to the glory of god the father thank you lord <laughs> are you blessed this wisdom is sensual secondly devilish the word devilish means demonic diamonesis that's the greek word from evil spirit or from the devil this wisdom is from evil spirit or from the devil it is the devil that destroys makes sick makes ill causes confusion he retards people's progress he brings sadness so when your prayer life is full of you will be sick and die young you will be bedridden three years before you die you will fail that your job they will sack you your children will have sickle cell anemia all of them one by one when your prayer is full of that you know who is behind that prayer because that prayer paints an environment that is devilish it paints a wicked environment demonic comes from evil spirits so if you are going to exercise authority on the earth as a man in the name of jesus that authority must be within the confines of the love of god it must it must amen god the father does not have the capacity to answer prayers that contradict his nature he doesn't have such capacity so when you curse people what you're doing is you are yielding to evil spirits you are yielding to evil spirits james chapter 3 verse 14 but if you have bitter envying and strife in your heart glory not and lie not against the truth verse 15 this wisdom descended not from above but is earthly sensual and devilish 16. for where envying and strife is there is confusion and every evil work anywhere there is envy anywhere there is strife you are praying out of anger and strife evil work will be around it evil work means in answer to that evil prayer there will be evil activities like sickness death failure following that man 
stand on your feet. Let's close this up. When you keep blessing people, their hatred cannot work on you. Now, do not be overcome with evil, but overcome evil. So blessing is more powerful than cursing. So when people curse you and you bless them, your blessing swallow their curse. I don't know who I'm teaching here. Good is better than bad. Light is stronger than darkness. When people think they're fighting you, love them. Your love will defeat them. Because love never fails. Somebody say I hear. See if you understand my message, your life will be easy. You will just find out you don't really bother about enemies or anything. You are living a happy life. And if anybody goes out of his way to show you hatred, you love him back. He has problem. You don't have problem. The person that hates you is somebody that drank poison. Then is waiting for you to die. <laughs> hatred is drinking poison and expecting your opponent to die. Who drank the poison? You. Who is going to die? You. That's hatred. You drank poison, then you are wishing the other person to die. The person with the poison is you now. Hatred is a poison in your body. It is called offended. Offended means off ended. They chop you off and end you. It's called offense. So love people. Don't hate people. Do good to those that hate you, that you may be the children of your Father, which is in heaven. Are you blessed? Are you blessed in this house? Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Lift your two hands and let's pray in tongues for a few seconds. Just a few seconds. Let's pray in the spirit, everybody. Let the river flow out of your belly. Let's pray in the spirit. Let's pray in the spirit. Let's pray in the spirit. Bosha kola da boza kele na maha membra da gaba baba boro kote kele na moja kara na maho ele boze krete kele na babamboro do gobo je kele na maha. Thank you, my father. Lift your two hands up and let your amen come like thunder. Wherever you're hearing the sound of my voice, be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Access the good of the land. Access the wealth of the land. Access the treasures of the land. Access the blessings of the land. Those of you that are business ideas, I command the land to accept your idea. Those of you that are opening new businesses, I command the land to receive your business. Men will patronize your business. I bless your ideas. I bless your concepts. I bless your relationships. I bless your relationships. I bless your relationships. I bless the work of your hands. I bless your mind. I bless your creation. In the name of Jesus, receive your inheritance. Receive your portion. 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 In the name of Jesus, favor is falling on your life. 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 Thank you, Lord. It is well with you. Prosper in this land. Excel in this land. Build in this land. Buy in this land. Establish in this land. From this land, touch the world. From this land, shake America. Shake Europe. Shake Asia. Shake Africa. If your amen is louder, receive it by grace. Receive it by grace. Receive it by grace. Receive it by grace. 24 hours from now, wherever you're hearing the sound of my voice, receive supernatural bank alerts. Receive supernatural bank alerts. Receive business money. Receive capital. Receive favor. Receive space. In the name of Jesus. It is well with you. Increase enlargement and greatness. That is your portion. In Jesus' precious name. Can that amen put a permanent stamp on the prayer we have just put? 
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. Those of you on Facebook here, help me share the messages. Invite more people to the platform. Let's lighten the dark places of the earth. I'm excited, friends. And until I come again your way, bring in the word of his grace. Enjoy the grace of Jesus Christ. Amen. Station, Cause we've been on the preparation